As you watch this teaching, I want to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting right here waiting for you. And today I'm going to begin a brand new series called The Ministry of the Holy Spirit for the New and the Mature Believer. It is a five-part series. And my friends, this week we're going to dive into what the New Testament tells us about the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was growing up, we hardly ever even heard of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we heard his name in a benediction. We heard the name of the Holy Spirit when we baptized people. But practically, we did not know how to relate to the person of the Holy Spirit. We have to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with today's teaching. But this series is called The Ministry of the Holy Spirit for the New and the Mature Believer. It's five parts and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And you can order these by going online or by giving us a call. But... I also want you to have my book about the Holy Spirit, which is called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. This book will really walk you into a dynamic relationship with the Spirit. And I've written another book that I think is really very essential for every believer. And it is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is not a very big book, but it is a powerful book. We're living in a day when it seems like the gifts of the Holy Spirit are disappearing from the church. Well, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in the church, but you've got to make room for them to work. And people are no longer making room for the Spirit to work. So I wrote this book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. My friends, we need them. That's why God gave them. And I want you to have this book as well. And starting today for the first time on the program, I'm going to tell you about my brand new book, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the world before the flood. The foreword is written by Perry Stone and Andrew Jones. The subtitle says, How the events of Noah's Ark and the flood are relevant to the end of the age. I have never had more fun writing a book than writing this book, and I wrote it very quickly, but it is really filled with a lot of research. There's more than 300 footnotes. There's more than 300 graphics and art and illustrations my friends, it is just loaded because I want to walk you into the world before the flood. And I even included photos of Noah's Ark, which I visited with my team and we documented. But it's all in this book. And today is the first day which we're offering it on the program. And you can find out how to purchase this by going online or by giving us a call. And by the way, I've got another new book which is called Renner A to Z. Wow. You know, I write a lot of books. In 1978, the Lord said to me, write, 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 and I'll prosper what you write. And I understood my job was to write. His job was to prosper what I write. But he can't prosper it if I don't put my fingers on the keyboard. So I've been writing and writing. And I've got another new book called Renner A to Z. And it's me answering questions, making comments on 400 different Bible topics, A to Z, nearly 1,800 quotes and comments. It's really a wonderful book. But anyhow, you can order all these things by going online or you can give us a call right now. And when you reach out to us, would you please let us know how to pray for you? And thank you for rendezvousing around the Bible with me today as we begin to study the ministry of the Holy Spirit for the new and the mature believer. I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, today I'm going to begin talking to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit for the new and mature believer. And today we're specifically going to see what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. On the evening that Jesus served communion to his disciples, he taught them about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He knew it was the last time he was going to have an opportunity to teach before the cross. So when you come to John chapter 14, 15, and 16, you find that Jesus spoke three chapters about the ministry of the Holy Spirit because Jesus understood it was essential that the disciples know how to connect and relate to the person of the Holy Spirit. 
that had related to him personally for three and a half years. But now he was going away and he was sending a comforter to be with them and he wanted them to understand their need to really connect with the Holy Spirit. And when you look at the life of Jesus, you find that Jesus and the Holy Spirit were entwined in everything they did. Now, I've got my Bible, and I want you to get your Bible because we always use the Bible in this program. And today, we're going to really be looking at what Jesus said in John 14, 15, and 16. But first, I want to give you some scriptures just to show you how connected Jesus was to the Holy Spirit. In Luke 1, 35, we read that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. In Mark 3, 16, we read that Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 4, 1, we read that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. In Luke 4, 18, we find that Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and to deliver captives. In Acts 10, 38, we discover that Jesus healed people by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 12, 28, we find that Jesus cast out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews 9, verse 12, we are remarkably told that Jesus was crucified in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Romans 8, 11, we find that Jesus was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Ephesians 1, 19 to 20, we find Jesus was exalted to the Father's right hand by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Luke 24, 49, and in Acts 1, 4 to 5, Jesus commanded his disciples to remain in Jerusalem until they received the same empowerment from the Holy Spirit that he had received. So from the beginning of Jesus' life to the end of his physical life, Jesus was completely intertwined with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and no one knew the Holy Spirit better than Jesus. In fact, Jesus did nothing apart from the Holy Spirit. He said, of my own self, I can do nothing. Jesus was always waiting for the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and he followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that is why Jesus had a 100% success rate. He moved when the Holy Spirit said to move. He did nothing when the Holy Spirit said to do nothing. He was completely led by the Holy Spirit. But when you come to John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, Jesus is teaching the disciples in the upper room about the Holy Spirit. And we find that in John chapter 14, 15 and 16, he refers to the Holy Spirit with a personal pronoun 19 times. He never calls the Holy Spirit an it or a feeling, doesn't even refer to the Holy Spirit as the anointing, but always refers to the Holy Spirit with a personal pronoun. And this means you can relate to him. He is the third person of the Godhead. He's not just a feeling that you feel or a goosebump or something that moves throughout the room. The Holy Spirit is just as much a person as the Father and the Son. He is the third person of the Godhead. And when you come to John 14, 16, and 17, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. If you've got an ink pen or a pencil, either underline or circle that word He. Then it continues, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not. Notice Jesus again uses a personal pronoun. Either underline or circle that word Him. Neither knoweth Him, there it is again, another personal pronoun, but you know Him, there it is again, and He, another personal pronoun, and He dwelleth with you, and He shall be in you. So just in these two verses, Jesus uses a personal pronoun to describe the ministry of the Holy Spirit five times, five times. My friend, you can relate to the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Godhead, just like you can speak to the Father, just like you can speak to the Son, you can speak to the Holy Spirit. But then when you come to John 14, verse 26, Jesus added, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He, there's another personal pronoun, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So now we find another personal pronoun to describe the person of the Holy Spirit. Then when you come to John 15, verse 26, Jesus says, And when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. 
another personal pronoun. And then you come to John chapter 16, verses 7 to 8, and Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He didn't say, I'll send it. He didn't say, I'll send a feeling. He said, I'll send him unto you. And when he is come, Jesus is referring to the Holy Spirit as a person. When he is come, he, there it is again, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So in John 16, 7 and 8, we have three more personal pronouns to describe the Holy Spirit. Then you come to John 16, 13 to 15. Now listen to this one. Jesus said, how be it when he, there's a personal pronoun, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all the truth. A second personal pronoun. For he, there it is again, he shall not speak of himself. There it is again, another personal pronoun. But whatsoever he shall hear, there it is again, he shall speak unto you. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So in John 16, 13 to 15, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit with a personal pronoun 10 times. That's amazing. So my friends, if you add all these together, all of these verses that we've just covered and all the times that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as he or himself, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit with a personal pronoun 19 times. 19 times in three chapters. And it means just like you can speak to the Father and just like you can speak to the Son, you can speak to the person of the Holy Spirit and you need to because this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. The Father is in heaven. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, but he has sent the Holy Spirit into the world and it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us. It is the Holy Spirit that works for us and we need to know how to relate to him and connect with him as a person. But there's something else very important Jesus said in these chapters about the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught the Holy Spirit is our comforter. And first of all, we find this in John 14, 16 and 17, where the Bible says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he might abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. And notice Jesus calls him another comforter. The word another is the Greek word alos, which means another of the very same type or one who is identical. Well, you have to remember, Jesus was speaking his last words to the disciples. For three and a half years, he's been their comforter. He has walked with them. He's told them how to preach. He even taught them how to cast out demons. It was Jesus who taught them how to heal the sick. Jesus has literally been right alongside of them. And now Jesus says, I'm leaving, but hey, the Father is going to give you another, the Greek word, alos, comforter. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will be identical to me in every way. In fact, having him will be like, you still have me. And notice that he calls the Holy Spirit a comforter, which is the Greek word, parakletos. And it's a compound of two words, the word para, which means alongside, and the word kaleo, which means to call or to beckon. But when you compound these two words together, this word parakletos, which is translated as the word comforter, really means one who is called alongside, one who is an advisor, one who is an advocate or a coach. And I really think the word coach is best. Let's think about what Jesus had been for three and a half years. He had been a counselor. He had been alongside of them. He had been their advisor and he'd been their coach. He told them how to pack their suitcases. Jesus coached them about what to take. Jesus coached them about what to say when they went into people's houses. Jesus coached them to say when they left homes. Jesus coached them what to do if a city didn't receive them. Jesus coached them about how to cast out demons and how to heal the sick. Jesus was alongside of them all the time and they relied on Jesus for his coaching. And now Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll be allos. He'll be identical to me. Everything that I have done for you when I am with you physically, he will now do for you as the spirit. 
He will coach you. He will advise you. Just like I've taught you how to heal, he will continue coaching you how to heal the sick. Just like I've coached you how to cast out demons, he'll coach you how to cast out demons. The Holy Spirit will be a coach to you just like I've been a coach to you. Now that is amazing. And in fact, this was so important that Jesus repeated it three times, three times. For example, when you come to John 14, 26, Jesus says it again. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus twice has repeated that the Holy Spirit is a Comforter. But that's not all. When you get to John 15, 26, Jesus says it again. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, now he calls the Holy Spirit a Comforter Again, and there is one more time, which we find in John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Four times in three chapters, Jesus has referred to the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. My friends, Jesus is trying to drive this into the heart of the disciples. The disciples have physically related to him for three and a half years. They have seen him. They've walked with him. They could touch him, but now he's leaving. And now Jesus is going to send the Holy Spirit whom they cannot physically see and they cannot physically touch. But Jesus says, it doesn't matter when he comes, he'll continue to do for you everything that I've done for you. He'll be allos. He'll be just like me in every way. He'll be identical to me. In fact, having him will be as if you still have me. You just won't be able to see him. And he'll be your comforter. He'll be your coach. He'll be your advocate. He'll be your advisor. Everything that I have done, just like you've relied on me, you can rely on him. But now they may have been saying, but wait, wait, wait. Can we really rely on someone that we cannot see? And for that reason... Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth three times in these same chapters. It was the equivalent of saying, guys, when he comes, he is the Spirit of truth. He will never mislead you. He will never misguide you. Anything he says to you, you can bank on it that it is the truth. He is the Spirit of truth. We find this in John 14, 16 and 17 where Jesus said, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. Guys, when he shows up, you can trust him. He is the spirit of truth. Or John 15, 26. And when the comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. Now Jesus has repeated twice that the Holy Spirit is trustworthy. And number three, In John 16, 13, Jesus said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now Jesus calls the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, three times, trying to drive it into the hearts of the apostles and us that we can trust the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of truth. He will never mislead you. He will never misguide you. If he tells you to do something, he's telling you the truth. He knows it will work. If he tells you not to do something, it's because he's trying to help you. He is the spirit of truth. And in these chapters, Jesus calls him the comforter four times. He is your coach, your coach, your coach. He calls him the spirit of truth three times. You can trust him, you can trust him, you can trust him, and refers to him with a personal pronoun, calling him either he or himself 19 times in three chapters in order that we can build a relationship with the Spirit of God as a person. Now, if you think he's just a feeling, it's kind of hard to have a relationship with a feeling. Or if you think the Holy Spirit is just an anointing, how do you develop a relationship with an anointing? Or he's a goosebump, Well, they come and go. How do you develop a relationship with a goosebump? Jesus' guys, just like the Father is a person, just like I am a person, when the Holy Spirit comes, He's the third person of the Godhead. And just like you can talk to the Father and you can talk to me when He comes, you can talk to the Holy Spirit. And my friends, the Holy Spirit has been sent to be your helper. He's been sent to be your coach. You need to talk to your coach. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you should respond to him. I hear you, Holy Spirit. What are you telling me to do? Are you really telling me not to do that right now? 
Listen to the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of truth, and He has been sent to be your helper. Wow. Do you see why this teaching is important for everyone? It's important for the new believer. It is important for the new believer, the mature believer. We all need to have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, but we're just getting started. I'm going to come back in tomorrow's program to pick up right here. It's going to be good, but I've got some more things to say to you today. I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the interesting question, what is the greatest resort you and Denise enjoy most in the world? Well, to be honest, Denise and I don't do vacations. If we go somewhere, we're going there to work or to write a book. But every day we do go to a resort and our resort is described in Psalm 71 verse three, which says, be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. My time with the Lord every morning is the greatest resort in the world. And my friend, it's a resort that you can go to every day, multiple times every day. It's a place where you'll be strengthened, where you'll be refreshed. It is the greatest resort in the world when you can spend a few times with Jesus throughout your day. And for us, the greatest resort on the planet is just being able to spend some time with the Lord. He is our strong habitation, and we regularly resort to be with the Lord. Before Jesus ascended to the Father, he taught the disciples about the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit. On his last evening with them, Jesus spent time with the disciples to make sure they really understood the importance of partnering with the Holy Spirit. In this five-part series, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit for the New and Mature Believer, Rick Renner walks you through this in-depth teaching that Jesus gave the disciples and us about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Rick unlocks mysteries that will benefit anyone, including the new and the mature believer. He discusses how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, how to partner with the Holy Spirit, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, how to enter into a supernatural relationship with the Holy Spirit. This transforming series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. In addition, we are also offering the books, The Holy Spirit in You for $17, and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit for $12. In these books, Rick brings you to an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and shows you how to operate in spiritual gifts. Don't miss this special offer. Bundle the series, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit for the New and Mature believer and the books the holy spirit in you and why we need the gifts of the holy spirit and for a limited time we are also offering rick's book fallen angels giants monsters and the world before the flood for a special pre-sale discounted price call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order call or go online now hey this is rick renner and i'm standing in one of the long corridors in the tulsa headquarters building and these corridors are lined with photography of our past ministry. For example, here, it's amazing. You see a picture of me and Denise first starting our ministry as we're traveling in the car with Paul and Philip on her lap and there's little Joel. But then you look over here and you see our Russian ministry. Here's Golden Stars with some of the Russian movie stars who came to help us. At that event, we had more than 16,000 senior citizens show up. That is amazing. Then you see the youth ministry and us working with members of the government. And here you see again me and Denise in our first little church we started in Arkansas many, many, many years ago. And then you look over here and you see us filming TV programs. I mean, there's just so much. And when you walk through these hallways, and look at all these pictures, you're just surrounded with what God has done throughout our ministry, and it is amazing. And now, every day in this facility, ministry is taking place. Oh, I wish you could hear the phone calls. And when our team begins to pray, it is like a roar of prayer that you can hear when you walk through our partner care ministry, or the letters that are going out, or the resources, and resources are books, and. USBs and all kinds of video and audio, and it's going to the ends of the earth. And we're able to do all of that because we have a facility where we can do it. And paying off this facility is our current goal. You know, when we started the Ministry Expansion Project, it was quite large, but we've already paid off half of it. That's amazing. And you 
helped us to do that. And I want to say thank you. Please help us continue until we finish it. And if you're not a part of the team yet, please pray about becoming a part of our ministry expansion project giving team so we can pay off all of this and then liberate all that money to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's our desire. So I want to say thank you in advance for helping us. Wow, we have covered a lot of material really fast today, but I want you to have the entire series, which is called The Ministry of the Holy Spirit for the New and Mature Believer. And everything I have shared and even more is in the study guide. I really want you to have these because I believe it's going to take you somewhere deep in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. We're also offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. We're also offering you the book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And today, for the first time on TV, I'm letting you know about my new book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And my friend, you can order all these things, wow, and so many more resources by going online, or you can give us a call. And when you reach out to us, please let us know how to pray for you. And not only will we listen to you as you express your need, we'll listen to the Holy Spirit who is our coach and he will show us how to pray for you and we will pray accurately and Jesus will move because we got into agreement in prayer. Amen. But when you reach out, let us know how to pray for you. We really are praying people. But I want to pray for you right now. So please put your hand on your heart and receive this prayer and this blessing. Father, we thank you that you've sent the Holy Spirit to be our coach, and the Holy Spirit really is the Spirit of truth. Help us to relate to the Spirit of God just like we do to the Father, just like we do to Jesus. Help us be able to speak to the Holy Spirit and develop a partnership with Him that will release dynamic power in our life. In Jesus' name, and my friend, I speak it to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, I've enjoyed today, but we'll be back tomorrow. Don't miss it. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation. We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.